This video is for MYP design students who are preparing their Criterion D summative assessment document and they want to get top marks. So in this video I'm going to go into great detail about how to get top marks for strand one. So let's start with the assessment criteria. So it says here for top marks you need to design detailed and relevant testing methods which generate data and measure the success of the solution. So a couple of words that I've highlighted there in pink. One is detailed. If you want to get top marks, it needs to be detailed. Uh, the other one is relevant testing methods, and that is plural as well. There is an S on the end of methods. So that means you need to, uh, for top marks, you need more than one testing method. Uh, and that testing method should generate some kind of data, and that needs to be, uh, that measures the success of the solution and that solution should be measured against the design specifications. Okay, a couple of pointers about how to achieve that. So first of all, the first bullet point I've written there was you, first of all, you create your test. Actually better, if you wanna to get top marks, you need a series of tests. Uh, and in Criterion D strand one, you basically just explain the test. Just be aware, strand one, we're not looking at test results at all. This is just about the actual creation of the test. The results of the test come later in Criterion D, but it's not now. So this is just about the test. So explain the test in great detail. Now, if you've actually created some kind of a test, for example, you've got a bunch of survey, uh, online surveys, or you've got, you've got some questions because you're gonna conduct an interview, or if you've got any kind of um, actual test that you've created, this is where you share it. Now remember in design, it's very important to be able to present your work. So here you're basically just presenting your test. So something could be simple as just putting an, a, a link for your, some kind of like an online survey. Um, and that's what you do there. Next thing, you now should actually explain this test. So pretend the person reading the document uh, your summative assessment document doesn't actually know what this is all about. So you just put it in nice and simple terms and explain, I've conducted a test. So first of all, you need to explain who who's going to be actually doing the test. Who, who, who's the person who's going to be completing the test? You explain that in strand one. When is it actually going to happen? It's going to happen after school or over a period of time. Where is it actually going to happen? Because sometimes you have a physical object and imagine you've baked a cake that cake is gonna be in this place and it's gonna be eaten by these people and these people are going to complete a survey. Um, now, if you wanna to get top marks, just explain why. So why are you having it on a Friday? Why are you doing your testing on the Friday? Why are you getting your teachers and your mother and five friends involved? So if you can add a bit of why, this helps flesh out your document, uh, but also uh, adds a lot of weight to, to exactly when you're explaining the test, it puts a lot of weight into your, uh, your body of work, basically. The next thing here is, uh, the test should be linked to all the different design specifications. Now, the easiest thing to do, if you go back and remember when you created your design specifications, way back in Criterion B, you probably created a nice table. So copy and paste that table. So just look at all those words that you've used for each design specification and just turn, turn them into kind of questions or testing methods. So that's the easiest way to do that. And that way you're linking your Criterion B uh, with Criterion D, which is very a very clever way to package this summative uh, assessment document. Uh, next thing is present the test. Okay, another thing we can probably talk about in this diagram, this green picture shows a little bit about this. Now for top marks, you need to do more than one test. So you might do some kind of like a survey. Now if you do a survey, that is considered data collection of quantitative, quantitative survey because you're collecting a lot of data. So that means you might send your survey for, to 50 people or 20 people. Now, when it comes to qualitative data collection, this is when you do a little bit more deeper uh, um, kind of, this is a best example of that as an interview with a certain person. Perhaps it's your client that you actually conduct an interview and you can record that interview and you've got a series of questions that you want to, to uh, ask them. So that's the difference between the qualitative and quantitative data collection. And if you want to get top marks, you should have both of those. Um, okay, let's move on while we're looking at that image to a few more images to help explain strand one. 
So focus group, this is quite common uh, when it comes to products or even whether it's a product design or whether you're making a movie, whatever it is, or building a website, this is the testing. Now quite often, uh, big companies, big businesses have focus groups. So just imagine a food company and the, before they launch and manufacture and package this particular uh, product, they wanna test it. So they have a, a focus group who tests the product and they get detailed feedback and then they can change it and edit it and make it a little bit better. So the, the concept of focus group is very common in design. Uh, and that's what you're kind of tapping into here because whatever you made for this uh, project could be considered like a prototype. Um, so you're testing that with your focus group. Uh, so there's a, a lot of different types of focus group uh, forms. Um, so I won't go into that in great detail, but this is where, where this criteria fits in with the big picture. Next thing, uh, if you're making an on, I would recommend an online survey. If you've created some kind of a product, use technology to, to create your survey and all the questions should be linked to the design specification and then you can send that survey to a lot of people. Now when you're creating the survey, just have the person completing the survey in mind. They don't want to be writing sentences, sentences, sentences. Keep it nice and simple and not too time consuming because if your questions are difficult to answer, take up too much time, a lot of people will just give up. After the first one or two questions, if it's too difficult or not, not well worded, people just quit. So just be conscious that you, to create, to get good survey results, you really need to create a user-friendly, easy to understand survey uh, questions and survey forms. So keep that in mind when you're creating your questions. Uh, with that in mind, uh, quite popular things like restaurants or movies or games have a, a review system which is very, uh, very common, which is out of five stars. So keep this in mind. If you're creating your survey form, pick to a, some kind of a scale, whether it's one to five, one to 10, one to three, I'd recommend one to five because it's very familiar. Uh, and keep that same rating score for everything because it's very important. You don't want to, uh, the, the person completing the curve, uh, survey to start completing, okay, now I'm scoring it out of one to 10, and the next question, hang on, one to five, hang on, is five, does five mean excellent or does five mean the worst? So keep the rating scale simple and user friendly. And I'll give you a little secret uh, for free. One of the easiest things to do is once you get a, write a nice question that is linked to your design specification and you've got the good rating system, a lot of uh, online form tools and survey tools they've got a button which it duplicates. So you can just then duplicate that question and that rating scale, and then just change a few words of the question and then duplicate it again. This, this, uh, this will help you produce a very consistent survey and it's very user friendly. Um, okay, this is quite common in the schools to complete, get the old questionnaire, uh, to get your friends or your peers to look at your product, whatever it was that you made and give some feedback. So. Think of technology, but you can also do the pencil and paper kind of a survey as well. Now, trying to put this in context again, when big businesses make certain products, like here's an example of a chair, they do a lot of testing. And you can see two examples here. There's actually product testing with specially made uh, equipment to see how the, you know, things like the strength of it and how lo the, uh, the longevity of the actual product. And then there's also the, people that actually sit on the, pro the chair or whatever it might be, interact with the product and give feedback. So criterion D is actually really, really important stage in the design process. Um, now, I'm gonna conclude with a little bit about the assessment criteria and the differentiation. Now, if you're looking at the assessment scale, to get a score of one, you just need to create some kind of test. You do that and you get a score of two. Now, if the test is relevant, which in other words means connected to the design specification, you can get a score of four. So that's if you create one test and it's linked to the design specification, you've got a score of four. Now, if you wanna get a score of six, you need to do more than one test. So that's the difference between a four and a six. Method compared to methods. So you need more than one test if you want a six. Now, to get an eight, it has to be detailed, a detailed test, not a detail, detailed tests. So that's the difference with the assessment scale. Um, good luck with Criterion uh, D strand one. I hope you get an A.